Hello everybody, it's Dio from Firm But Fair Gaming bringing you another video. Join all the videos and content we produce. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button, click on that like button, and don't be afraid to share. Don't forget to click on the notification button, customize it however you want, but that way you're notified whenever we publish another video. Hello everyone and welcome to another Diablo 3 video here in Season 27. Today we are taking a look at the Witch Doctor and the Helltooth Harness set. So for those that are unfamiliar, the two-piece bonus of the set is enemies hit by primary skills, Acid Cloud, Fire Bat, Zombie Charger, Zombie Dogs, Gargantuan, Grasp of the Dead, Piranhas, Wall of Death are affected by Necrosis, becoming slowed and taking 3000% weapon damage over 10 seconds. The four pieces after applying Necrosis to an enemy, we take 60% less damage. And lastly, our six pieces after casting Wall of Death, we gain 17,500% increased damage for 15 seconds to our primary skills, uh, Ask Cloud, Fire Bat, Zombie Charger, Dogs, Gargantuan, Grasp of the Dead, Piranhas, and Wall of Death. So basically everything in our two piece then gets the bonus in our six piece. So before we get into the itemization and skills, let's take a look at what the gameplay actually looks like. So we are just jumping into a 105 here. And basically, well, so this is a pet build, which means we are a little bit limited because we can only kill what our pets actually want to go on. And so sometimes they have a mind of their own and it's not as intuitive as what we would obviously have done. So we're kind of limited in that way, but they do have pretty strong cleave and just overall damage here in their gargantuans. Uh, so we are using Gargantuans and then with the uh, sanctified affix that we get we also are going to be able to get our zombie dogs out so we're using enforcer and then of course we're using one of the rings for the gargantuan we are using the short man's finger so as you can see I'm kind of just elite hunting here I basically all we're doing is we're trying to get surrounded and then having our pets warp to us Throwing out the wall of death so they deal tons of damage using Pyronado to group them. So this would be, so here we go. And then you can even throw out your gargantuans into the middle. So that's one way to control them is you can resummon them where you would like them. And we are running the, I can't even check the passive and right the second I'm drawing a blank. But basically every time we kill something we get one second off CD. I should remember. Graven Justice, I believe, is what it's actually called. Now my brain's a little bit woken up. So this is all we're doing is we're just grouping them up, throwing out a Pyronado, getting a Wall of Death out there for the damage boost, and then rinse and repeat. And we do have Sacrifice in the build, so we are sacrificing the zombie dogs that are getting summoned from our Sanctified Affix. And that's just going to give us, and it does stack, so we do get a bit of a damage boost from that as well. So here I'm going to do the wall of death, start sacrificing zombie dogs, and as you can see I'm getting the bonus down there, and it's 5% through per one that we're sacrificing. And of course I lucked out here, I'm in an or extreme, which is just phenomenal. <laughs> Except for here, see this is what I'm talking about, my gargantuans are over there and I can't resummon them. I would like them to have been down here. So here I can actually force them to be where I want. So I just cast them in the middle here on top of the actual elite. And then they're just going to town and just cleaving that down. Now I'll just put it up again because they're still where I need them to be. So I don't need to resummon. Oh, here's a new elite. So we're just going to go over here, jump on top of him, resummon them so that they're on top of it. We're going to get frozen there. Oh, he was shielding, of course. So we kind of are just at uh, the mercy of our pets here and just waiting for them to actually get onto the elite. We summon again to kind of force them to be where I want them to be. There we go. And then they blow him up. So that is about the only, well, not the only, but it is one of the downsides is that we have to wait for them to actually get on the target that we want which can kind of slow down the build. So it's definitely not a 
speed build, at least not for rift clearing, because when they get sidetracked like that, it is pretty annoying when they're not on your actual target. We're getting actually a pretty sweet run here with the chain of <laughs> chain of pylons there. Have them clean that up. Oh, you can see this guy. Some of them, see? Perfect, that was even a jug. It works so much better when they actually go where you want them to go. So that's basically all there is to this build. And yeah, all right, so let's jump into it. I'll talk a little bit more about the build while we're going through the items and all that. So let's jump into that. Okay, just to recap, basically the rotation is we're just going to get kind of surrounded or group up ads as best we can. Throw to Pyronado, throw to our Wall of Death, and then if we're able to resummon our Gargantuans where we'd we where we would want them, whether if it's on an elite or a champ pack, because sometimes if there's lots of mobs, they'll kind of get caught on the outside and not exactly be attacking the targets you want. So if you have the ability to resummon them, then resummon them where you would like them to be. And then as we can, we're going to do some sacrifices to gain our damage buff. Okay, let's take a look at the actual items needed for this set. So we are wearing five pieces. So that of course means that we are using the Ring of Royal Grandeur in the cube. So the five pieces that we're wearing for this set are as we are wearing the shoulders, the chest, the gloves, the pants and the boots. And this allows us to also wear the Guardian's Jeopardy set. So the those that aren't familiar, it's a new set for season 27. So the two piece bonus for this set is your melee reduction is, re is increased by 1% per thousand base vitality that we have. And then our missile damage reduction, so range attacks reduction, will increase by 1% for every thousand base strength, dex or intellect. And then the three piece bonus is that we gain 100% more base strength, dex, int and vit. So basically it doubles everything that we have. So we get the double bonus of damage mitigation. So this is why with no augments and no ancient gear, I have almost I have just over 19,000 intellect and almost 8,000 VIT. So that helps out there, it gives us extra damage as well as survivability. And then we, of course, by using Ring of Royal Grandeur, we're getting the three piece bonus, we're only wearing two pieces. So the other items that complete this set is the, for the helm, we are wearing Mask of Jerem. So we're wearing this because the unique affix is pets deal up to 200% increased damage. Obviously the one I have here is only 162, so it's not very good. So I'll be looking for a new one. Then for our jewelry, using squirts, so while not taking damage, damage dealt is increased by up to 100%, and damage taken is increased by up to 50. So while we're not taking damage, we're going to get the stack that you can see down here in the bottom left, and each stack is 10%, so it'd be 10% more damage, 5% more damage taken, and it gets up to 10. As soon as we take get hit, we gotta get that back um, by not taking damage. For our rings, we're using the short man's fingers, so Gargantuan instead summons three smaller Gargantuans that have their damage increased by up to 650%. And then also we are using the Ring of Emptiness. So our non us and our non-fetish pets deal up to 300% increased damage. The enemies affected by either your Haunt or Locust Swarm. And although we won't have Locust Swarm on our abilities, we do have it in their cube from the Wormwood. So I'll cover that a bit later. And then for our offhand, or mojo, don't do what I do. This is a craftable item from the blacksmith, so do not try to create this from the cube. Um, I wasted a bunch of resources, so don't do that. So we're using spite, and spite is non-cleaving gargantuan, clean, gain the cleave and chilling effects of the hum humongonoid rune. So, so that's pretty sweet there. Again, this is crafted from... The blacksmith don't waste a bunch of resources. I think I wasted like probably 3,000 mats not realizing that it was crafted. And then lastly, we are using Sacred Harvester. Uh, so this is Soul Harvest now stacks up to 10 times, which is basically giving us a ton more armor. So that's what we want to be using that for. The gems that we use in this build, so we are using Bane of the Trap, so this is, it increases damage against enemies under the effects of control and pairing effects by a certain percent. And then at rank 25, we gain an aura that reduces the movement speed of enemies within 20, 
within 15 yards by uh, 30%, thus proccing the bonus of Bane of the Trapped. We're also using Enforcer, which makes sense because this is a pet build. So Enforcer increases the damage of your pets by up to a certain percent. And then at rank 25, our pets take 90% less damage. And then lastly, we're using Bane of the Stricken. So each attack we make against an enemy increases the damage it takes from your attacks by a certain percent. And then this stacks. And then at rank 25, we gain 25% increased damage against bosses and Rift Guardians. For Kanai's Cube, in our weapon slot, we're using Wormwood. So Locust Swarm is continuously plagues enemies around you. So if you, as you can see around my person, there is this green circle. So that is Wormwood doing its thing. So we want to kind of run around everything and put Locust on it, which is going to proc our Ring of Emptiness. For our armor, we're using Lukumba's Ornaments. So it reduces all damage taken by 60% if your Soul Harvest stack is at least one and an additional 2% for each stack of Soul Harvest. So that works well with Sacred Harvester that is going to let us get up to 10 stacks of Soul Harvest. And then lastly, as mentioned, we are using Ring of Royal Grandeur, which of course is reduced the number of items needed for set bonuses by one, which is how we get the six piece by wearing five piece of the Helltooth and then get the three piece for Guardians with only two of the items. Lastly, let's take a look at the skills. So the skills needed here. So of course we need to have our Gargantuan and we're using Big Stinker. So it's just going to surround them by poison. The damage is near by enemies, but we're getting the cleave bonus from our offhand. And then we are using Sacrifice with Provoke the Pack. So we're going to banish one of our active zombie dogs, causing it to explode. And then we gain increased damage for five seconds after using Sacrifice. And then of course that stacks. We're using Wall of Death with Communion with Spirits. So this is just going to summon a spirit of a circle of spirits that chills all nearby enemies and reduces their damage taken. But also this is what we cast to get that 17,500% increased damage buff. We're using Spirit Walk with Severance. So we're just going to enter the Spirit Realm and get a burst of speed. So this lets us just speed through groups. And if we want to lead hunt, this is pretty key for that, helping us get from one elite pack to the next. And of course, we're using Soul Harvest with Languish. So basically, we're going to feed on the life force of enemies around us, increasing our intellect, as well as increasing our armor for each enemy harvested. And it also reduces their movement speed. And the last skill we have is Piranhas with Pyronados. So this is just going to summon uh, Tornado Piranhas and basically stack everything up for us so that our, our Gargantuans can get a nice cleave on everything all at once. For our passes, we're using Midnight Feast. So the damage of our Zombie Dogs and Gargantuans is increased by 50% and also gives us an additional Zombie Dog, which will let us sacrifice one more. It'll give us so we'll have, be able to have a max of four. We're using Confidence Ritual, so you deal 25% additional damage to enemies within 20 yards because we're going to be up close and personal. Pierce the Veil, all of our damage is increased by 20%, but our mana costs are increased by 30, which is fine because we are not mana heavy in this build, so it's basically free damage boost. And then lastly, we are using Grave Injustice, which we're going to gain 1% of our max life and mana, and more importantly, reduce the cooldown of all your skills by 1 second when an enemy dies within 20 yards. And then the range is extended by our, our items that increase our gold pickup. But basically, we just want the CDR, which is going to help us summon Gargantuans at our leisure where we want them in the middle of the groups. So this brings us to the end of the video. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, as always, we appreciate any likes, shares, and subscribes. So please click those buttons. And of course, we are streaming on Twitch on Thursdays and Saturdays, so be sure to come by and check us out. Come have some fun, join us. We'll run some GRs push, trying to get them pretty close to 150, so maybe that will be on the horizon. And yeah, so come by, check it out. Let's have some fun. So until next time, I hope to see you on Twitch, and if not, see you in the next video.